Hello, welcome to the All or One channel. I'm astrologer and coach Kelly Rosano, and this is Scorpio 2012 Year Ahead Astrology Forecast. Scorpio, Jupiter has been in your seventh house since June of 2011, and Jupiter will be in your seventh house until June of 2012. The seventh house has to do with marriage and partnership. It has to do with business partnerships as well. Anybody that we're having a partnership with. And having Jupiter in this part of your chart is really well. It heals the marriage. It improves marriage. It makes marriage great. It, if you're not married, you, att you can attract a really good marriage partner. You can attract really good business partners. You can attract good people to you that want to help you. And that is awesome, having Jupiter in the seventh house, improving your marriage, improving your relationship. Mars in Virgo is in the 11th house of hopes and wishes, goals and friends. And Mars is going retrograde June, excuse me, January 23rd through April 13th in this house of friends and groups and associations. So perhaps you will be doing some house cleaning around friends or groups you associate with. Mars likes to cut away things that no longer serve us. Mars likes to cut away the fat. So if you are finding yourself that you're being bogged down by these groups or friends that aren't really meeting your needs, this is an opportunity for you to take a look at where you're associating yourself, who you're associating yourself with, and see if it's something that you want to be doing in the future. So it's just a good time to take a look at the groups you're involved in, the groups you're investing in, and see if you want to continue that investment. Neptune. Neptune is going into your fifth house, and the fifth house has to do with love affairs, romance, creativity, our children. Neptune represents our highest ideals, the ideal marriage partner for Scorpio, the ideal living location, the ideal friends, the ideal groups, the ideal job, whatever our ideals are, our vision, our dreams. Neptune rules the music industry. Neptune rules the music industry. Movie industry, music industry, you see, fantasy. Neptune rules the part that we create from. Going into the fifth house, you could be, you know, in love with someone that, you know, you need to be taking a closer look at because the fifth house rules love affairs and you may be not seeing this person clearly because Neptune also rules illusion, delusion, deception, and confusion. And wherever Neptune is, is where we can be fooled. So having it in your fifth house of love affairs, you know, it could mean for some of you single Scorpios that you really need to pay attention to who is pulling your heartstrings because they may not be who they say they are. You know, I, I follow the, it's never the talk, it's always the walk. It's never what they say, it's always what they do. The behavior shows you who the person is. So you want to be paying attention here to you know, who you're giving your heart to in 2012 and on because Neptune's going to be in that part of your chart for a really long time. Uh, Neptune will be in Pisces you know, for years to come. And your eighth house is being lit up too because Venus goes into the eighth house on April 4th and she retrogrades and so she'll be in there through April, excuse me, uh, April 4th through August 7th and she retrogrades May 15th through June 27th and Jupiter goes into that house June 12th. So we got Venus and Jupiter in the eighth house. And the eighth house is the Scorpio house. It's the eighth house of intimacy. Seventh house, marriage and partnership. The eighth house is deep into the relationship, the sex house. It's the sex house, Scorpio. So you could be you know, involved with someone where you're having like this great love affair, the sex is incredible. That's why you have to be careful to make sure you know who this person is. And you know, nobody's perfect, but you do need to know what the downside is to the relationship or the downside, you know, 
the, the drawbacks with the person because you've got Neptune in the fifth house blurring everything. We go fuzzy. Wherever Neptune is, fuzzy, fuzzy, we can't see straight. And if you're having all this mad, passionate sex uh, with uh, Jupiter and Venus in the eighth house, it can blur your vision even more. Now, on another level, your income is going to increase because Venus and Jupiter are the money planets. Venus is the goddess of love and beauty and money. Jupiter is the god of expansion and opportunity and wealth coming together in Gemini in your eighth house of other people giving you their money, inheritance, tax insu uh, insurance payout, your partner's resources if you're married or in a significant relationship. So their money could be going up. Their money, they, your partner has more money, then you have more money as a couple. So, you know, 2012 is a good year for you. There's definitely financial increase on the, you know, on the horizon for you that has to do with other people wanting to give you their money. What could be better than that? So uh, now there's an eclipse in there on May 20th at zero degrees Gemini. So new beginnings in other people wanting to give you their money, new beginnings in a great sex life. <laughs> so, you know, Scorpio, 2012, you're really coming into it. And uh, then there's an eclipse in your second house in Sagittarius. So this could have to do with paying attention to this love affair, what's going on there, what's really going on there, because the eclipse in the second house is the last of its kind, the Sagittarius lunar eclipse, because we're going to be moving into Scorpio Taurus eclipses. And so you're really looking at your values, you're looking at uh, your resources, your self worth, your self respect, your self appreciation. This person you're with, do they appreciate you? Do they respect you? Are they walking their talk? You know, are they, you know, giving money or taking money? What's going on with the money and the relationship? This is really interesting. Um, you know, it, it, on the one hand, it, it, you're definitely seeing an increase in money coming to you. It, it just depends, you know, I'm reading for a 12th of the population here, you know, which Scorpio, who's, who, what kind of partner are you with? And, you know, are you the breadwinner? Are they, you know, taking money from you? Or are they the breadwinner and you're sharing money with them? You know, it will be different in each relationship. Each relationship is unique. Each relationship has its own situation and circumstance. So I don't want to generalize. But it's interesting that the eclipses are taking place in the money houses. Your, your personal money, how you earn money, eighth house, how other people give you their money. And... Uh, then I want to talk about Saturn. Okay, so Saturn has been in your 12th house. That's not fun <laughs> because whenever Saturn's going through the 12th house, it happens once every 28 years. And so it's basically a 30-year cycle. And Saturn's been in your 12th house now since the end of 2009. So you probably have felt like, you know, you've been finishing up things. You've been, you know, uh, maybe dealing with some frustration, some restriction, limitation, you know, you had false starts, you go to start this, nothing happens, you go to start this, nothing happens. That's going to come to an end when Saturn goes into Scorpio, your sign, on October 5th. So allow Saturn to finish up unfinished business because that's Saturn's intention in that 12th house. The 12th house is the last house. It's the house of karma. And when Saturn's in there, we need to finish up our lessons. We need to finish up everything that we've been doing for the last 28 years. And so when Saturn steps into Scorpio on October 5th, it's the birth of the new you. It's the birth of your new beginnings. It's the birth of your new life. And Saturn stepping into that first house is uh, the time where you really want to launch a new business, launch new programs, launch uh, anything that you've been working on for the past two and a half years while Saturn was in the 12th house and finishing things up. Then you have an eclipse in the first house at following Saturn. So Saturn enters on October 5th. Then you have the first in a, in a two-year series of Scorpio-Taurus eclipses 
in your first house, you, how you show up in the world, how we see you in the world, yourself, your spirit, your outlook on life, new beginnings. So you really do have new beginnings coming in here in 2012. And it's exciting because Saturn kicks it off, then the eclipse follows it. And this is the start. You can start a new career. You can start you know, a new life path, a new spiritual path. You'll have a new outlook on life. And you'll be very serious about anything you are building, whether it's a new business or a new job, about moving up in that job. You're going to be very focused and very serious with Saturn there. Now, the last eclipse is on November 28th in the final eclipse in the Gemini Sag series and that will finish up in the eighth house. So you may be, you know, rethinking uh, about uh, this relationship this year, even though the sex was great, but really what does this person bring into the table? Uh, what are their hang-ups? You know, Neptune has a tendency to bring to us people that have addiction problems and, you know, so you have to weigh this, you know. Uh, what is the benefit of continuing this partnership, relationship versus um, moving on. And so you're going to be thinking about that by the uh, end of 2012, uh, certainly in November. Now, I want to talk about Pluto, your ruling planet, and Uranus, the planet of awakenings and expect the unexpected. Pluto is in your third house of the mind and how you think and communicate. And Uranus is in your sixth house of health and work, work habits, health, lifestyle. They're going to go at it in 2012. It's actually the headline news of 2012 through 2015. Everything is out of balance. The environment's out of balance. The world is out of balance. The government is broken. Pluto and Uranus are coming in together to fight it out to change things. June 24th and November, excuse me, September 19th, they duke it out. This is where things could explode in your uh, work, in your community, having to do with neighbors or siblings, having to do with your work, people you work with. Remember, these planets only take what's obsolete. They don't take what you need for your soul evolution, for your life path destiny, for your highest good. They will not take that. They take what's obsolete. And so there's going to be some explosions and finalities at this time. Whatever's leaving, let it go. Okay, Scorpios have a tendency to hang on too long. And that drags things out and makes life harder for you. Make 2012 the year you make friends with change. Change is your friend. If you make friends with change, this will go a lot easier because you have so many good things coming in. You have um, Jupiter in the eighth house increasing your uh, money. You have uh, Venus going in there. You have um, just a wonderful year of new beginnings with Saturn and you know, so whatever needs to change at work or in the local community where you are, maybe you want to move, be open to that because it's good for you. Okay? So my Scorpio, if you're interested in getting a detailed look at your personal transits in 2012, email me at kelly at kellyrosano.com. Until next time, keep looking up.